In this video, we are going to look into what are continuous time periodic signals, some examples, and the way to determine if we add two periodic signals, whether the resultant signal would be a periodic signal or not. So for the periodicity of continuous time signals, it means that we have a signal say x of t so this signal can only be periodic if it satisfies this condition x of t plus t right so where capital t is a shift in time right and the condition is that this t should be greater than 0 so if there's a shift in time such that that shift does not affect on our original signal so this means that the signal is periodic so let us take one example of a cos function so this function is simply uh, t versus cos of t in this function we can observe that the first cycle starts from zero and it completes over here right so this could be our time period right after that it is repeating and so on but also note that you may have this whole thing starting from here one cycle and then the second cycle until here so this can also be t but the smallest t after which the signal is repeating is called the fundamental period so this fundamental period is usually referred to as t naught this is equivalent to 1 over f naught and f naught is simply the fundamental frequency or the first harmonic so we have mentioned that a signal can only be periodic if you time shift it by a value of t and after time shifting you're obtaining the same signal as original signal which is x of t so this means this is a periodic signal and the smallest time after which the signal is repeating is the fundamental period so as an interesting extension uh, let us now look into how uh, we can convert a signal which is not periodic uh, to a periodic signal by means of periodic extension so say we have a signal e minus t rectangular function t minus 1 by 2 right so e minus t is something like this and rectangular function is usually in this shape from minus 1 by 2 to 1 by 2 but note that we have shifted it on towards the right side so it has become this signal this is our t minus 1 by 2 if we multiply this signal with this signal eventually we would achieve a signal which is starting at 0 and terminating at 1 right so this is our signal so by periodic extension what we mean is that we can repeat this signal this was our origin we have 1 2 3 and the shape would be like this Now this has become a periodic signal. Say this is y of t. So mathematically speaking, this y of t is nothing but a summation, right? Of all of these signals. We can write a summation, right? And the first uh, function is an exponential function t and this function is repeated at different time intervals right so let us say that uh, they are 
T minus N T. So capital T is the time period and n is the integer value after which it is actually shifting right so we have a summation n equal to minus infinity to infinity t minus nt and with this we would also have a rectangular function t minus 1 by 2 minus nt so this was just one example of how we can make one non-periodic signal to a periodic signal by means of periodic extension. Let us further understand uh, the concept of periodicity of continuous time signals by means of some examples. So the first example is say we have a signal x of t which is 3 cos 4 t plus 5 by 4. And we are interested in finding uh, the time period of this signal. Let us do this uh, analytically first and then we'll uh, see some visuals to understand this function. We have mentioned that x of t can only be periodic if it is equivalent to x of t plus capital T. So let us see for this specific problem. We have 3 cos 4 t plus 5 by 4 and this is equivalent to 3 cos 4 t plus capital T plus 5 by 4. So this signal can only be periodic if we add a 2 pi to it, 2 pi and some integer value k. So this 2 pi would be defining the periodicity uh, by means of which it would complete one uh, 360 degree or 2 pi cycle. So this is equivalent to 3 cos 4 t plus 5 by 4 plus 4 t. So this means that this 2 pi k can be equated to 4 t. So 4 t is equal to 2 pi k this means that t is equal to pi by 2 k so this means that this signal would be repeating uh, after t time units and that t is depending on the value of k where k is simply an integer so this belongs to some positive integers and if this k is equal to 1 so this would mean that t naught is equal to pi by 2 or k equal to 1 so this is our fundamental period and naturally the first harmonic or the fundamental frequency is 2 by pi now let us uh, visualize this signal this is simply a cos function which has an amplitude of 3 and the time period from here that is if you start from here so this would be uh, pi by 2 but we also have to consider this this means that there is a phase shift so by phase shift we are uh, shifting this whole thing this signal towards either uh, right or left so over here this is time advance so we would be shifting towards left this means that if we shift towards uh, left uh, by pi by 4 so our pi by 4 would be over here so hence eventually the signal is something like this so it's starting over here so this is our pi by 2 and again the amplitude is 3 so this is plotted over here and you can observe that this is a periodic signal now let us take the second example over here x of t is equivalent to cos 2t min minus pi by 3 whole square so we have to find the fundamental time period of this uh, signal and uh, of course that would indicate that this is a periodic signal so let us see uh, how to solve that first this signal is a square right so let us uh, simplify this by means of uh, trigonometric properties again that is 
cos squared theta is equal to 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 cos 2 theta. So this means that x of t would be equivalent to 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 cos 4t minus 2 pi by 3. So this signal is definitely periodic and this signal is just giving a DC offset of 1 by 2. So this is uh, increasing the amplitude of this signal by 1 by 2. So this would not affect the periodicity of the signal, the overall signal. So let us see the uh, fundamental time period. So from here, as before, uh, for T plus capital C T, so we can say for capital T is equal to 2 pi k and again the time period would be equal to pi by 2 times k and t naught is equal to pi by 2. So this signal is periodic and the fundamental time period is this one. Now the third signal is a very interesting signal. Over here we have two sinusoids 5 cos 12 t plus pi by 2. This is our first signal and then we have a second signal 3 sin 5t minus pi by 2. So we know that this is sine function so this is periodic and this is also periodic. But what happens if we add these two periodic signals together? So would the resultant signal be a periodic signal or not? It's a very interesting question and there are series of steps that we have to follow uh, in order to understand whether this is going to be periodic or not and what is going to be uh, the fundamental period if any for this signal. So note that not all periodic signals when they add up together they become a periodic signal so we have to see the conditions. So the first step that we have to do over here is to check whether these two uh, the summation of these two would be periodic or not. And to do that we have to find the time period of this signal and the time period of this signal. So from here we can say that 12 T1 is equal to 2 pi k and hence T1 is equal to pi by 6 and we have set k equal to 1 that is the fundamental time period. And similarly from here we can say that uh, 5 T2 that is the time period for this signal is equal to 2 pi k and that is T2 is 2 pi by 5 right and we have set again the k equal to 1 right as a first check t1 by t2 this should be a rational function so this means that if in the numerator we have an integer value and in the denominator we have an integer value then it is a rational function and if not then that means that this is not a rational number and hence the signal would not be periodic. So for this specific case our t1 by t2 is pi by 6 to pi by 5, pi by 12. So this is a rational number integer divided by another integer. So the first check is okay so this is definitely periodic. So in step two, we have to convert to frequency domain. That is, we would have F1, which is one by T1. So we would have six by pi. And similarly, we have F2, which is equivalent to five by two pi. Next in step 3 we have to multiply f1 and f2 by a value such that f1 and f2 are integers. So over here we can normalize this by multiplying with 2 pi. So if we multiply with 2 pi this will become simply 5 that is an integer and this will become 12 that is again an integer. Right. So let's do that. that is multiply both sides by 2 pi. So this means that our new f1 which I have indicated as f1 hat this would be equal to 12 
and similarly f2 hat would be equal to 5 so in step 4 we are going to take the gcd that is the greatest common divisor so in f1 uh, we have 12 and f2 hat we have 5 so for f1 we simply have the divisors as 1 2 3 4 6 and 12 so 12 can be divided by 12 6 4 3 2 and 1 whereas on the other side 5 can only be divided by 1 and 5 right so the greatest common divisor is simply 1 so this means that the overall f hat is simply 1 hertz this is an important step uh, in this series let us move towards step 5 and step 5 is nothing but an inversion of our step 3 which was over here that is we had multiplied both sides by 2 pi so in step uh, 5 we would simply divide by 2 pi right so that is inversion of step 3 right so that is f would be equal to f hat divided by 2 pi so this means that our f is equal to 1 over 2 pi so this is our fundamental frequency and similarly the time period or t naught would be simply equal to 2 pi so for this specific problem we have mentioned that uh, this is a periodic signal from the first step and the fundamental period is obtained by following the five step uh, procedure so do note that uh, there are some other procedures by means of which you can find the fundamental period but i find this one to be very interesting and mechanical so again on a side note uh, let us see the same example and plot a single side spectra that is in frequency domain how would this signal look just on the positive frequencies uh, this signal would be replicated actually on the negative frequency so but let us look into the positive frequency that is single side spectra so note that the frequency of first signal is 6 by pi and that of second f2 is 2.5 by pi so overall the amplitude spectra would have a signal at 2.5 by pi and also at 6 by pi so 2.5 by pi is coming from here so the amplitude is 3 but uh, that would be divided by 2 so we would have a value of 1.5 and for the first one so this would be having a value of 5 by 2 that is 2.5 so this is our amplitude spectra similarly we can have a phase spectra where uh, again we would have the same frequencies at 2.5 pi and 6 by pi but in 2.5 pi the signal is having a phase of minus pi by 2 so we would have a phase of minus pi by 2 but for this one we have a phase of plus pi by 2 so that would be appearing over here pi by 2 so uh, this means that the time series signal such as x of t over here would have all the information generally in one plot that is the time series plot but on the other hand uh, the frequency domain counterpart would contain the same information in two different plots right that is the amplitude spectra as well as the phase spectra so the combination of these two is going to give you the complete uh, picture of this signal so this was all about the continuous time signals in the next video we would look into discrete time uh, signals and their periodicity